morning. I'm not gonna say that. Let me know when you're ready. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. 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 Feel free to like, you know. <laughs> I'm quite confused. <laughs> it would be more on just a Ready? Yep. Yeah. 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 Recording. I think. What up, y'all? Welcome to Off Mic with Ivory. I am your host, Ivory McDonald. Um, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm a worship leader, I'm a singer, songwriter, um, and worship is my passion. I love talking about worship. Uh, my opinion is that worship is super important and instrumental in a believer's life. And in this podcast, I really want to create a safe space for worship leaders, band members, production people, regular people to come together um, and just have open and honest conversation. And if you're not in the sphere of worship ministry, I really feel like you can relate to what we're talking about. Um, we're gonna be honest, y'all. We're gonna we're gonna be honest. We're gonna have fun. So let's start. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited today. You better do this intro. Listen, perfect. I'm, I'm you that. better that do good. this one intro. Take one day, like, I, you better <laughs> intro the people. Because when yes, we first no. started, it was like 26 takes. You now we're just intro. doing like three. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, um, today I got my brothers in the room again. Yes, thank you for having us back. Um, you're Hallelujah. welcome. Okay, so I have first with me Micaeus, Mikea. Mikeas Lopez. Lopez. We, we went over this already. But I tried. Yes. Listen, yes, I yes. tried. Um, <laughs> Mikeas Lopez in the house. He is a husband, a father, phenomenal worship leader, singer, songwriter. Have I missed anything? Oh, you got the husband and father. I'm good. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all give it up for Mikeas Lopez. Woo! Excited to be here. <laughs> Next, we have Colin Jackson, my brother from another mother. Yo, y'all going to be real comfortable with this dude. <laughs> He's like on like half the episodes. We um, but we got Colin Jackson in the house. He is a singer, a songwriter, an amazing worship leader. He's got music out. He's doing the things. He's going Son places. He's on. going to the Grammys. Make sure I got my backstage pass. I'm not man, so you never had. I receive it, oh God. But we are excited. Y'all give it up for Colin Jackson. Woo! And last but not least, I have my brother, Stephen Robertson. Yo. He Let's is go. a husband, a father, a worship leader, a singer, a songwriter. He's all the things. Have I missed anything? Nah, 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 nah. Depending on what I'm playing with my kids at any given moment, you know, I might be a superhero one day. I don't Amen. know. We'll see. We'll see. And Patrick also Mahomes. phenomenal guitarist. Yes. He kills on the guitars. Um, brother, I'm so glad that you're in the house. Oh, it's good to be back. What? I'm glad y'all are thanks. with me. Listen, okay. Yeah. Got a big one today. So. Woo! We're going to get right into it. We're going to have, um, I, we're going to have a serious conversation and I feel like we are mature people to have this conversation. Um, Chick-fil-A versus Popeyes. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's an easy one. Can we just can we just talk about it? It's an easy one. I want and, Colin, the Colin um, Jackson to go first. I mean, I just feel like it's God's chicken versus secular chicken. The end. The end. That was a nice icebreaker. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation in the period. Done. I mean, listen. Okay, so if you have a Chick Fil A sandwich you and you stuttering? compare it, no, no, no. <laughs> the stuttering is because of the, the agitation. This, 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 this. Okay, yes. okay. If you look at the sandwich, the pure real. size of the sandwich. Which one's bigger, Stephen? We're gonna go with the Popeyes Absolutely. chicken sandwich. Which one's crunchier, Stephen? The Popeyes chicken sandwich. Which one sandwich? tastes better, Stephen? Uh, the Popeyes. Thank chicken. you. I'm so and sorry. and the fries. Don't tell me the fries at Popeyes ain't as good as as. Chick -fil -A. Are we really about to play the the waffle fries? Listen, we were talking about that rounded sound Tell last time we were here. We're it's Popeyes. About rounded. I will say Chick Fil A had it for me until the sandwich came out, and that yes. that did it. The spicy. Yeah. Well, hey, clarity. The spicy chicken sandwich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you put this is. mess to rest, please? You see, this is a crazy thing about Jesus. Uh huh. <laughs> I preach the text. I feel my help. Oh my in God. In the room. Yeah, baby. You see, 
<laughs> a lot of times man puts an emphasis on things God. that God doesn't. My God. They I, mention the we, food I'm, being bigger. Uh-huh. Better, uh-huh. all these materialistic things. Oh my God! You could have all the money in the world and still not inherit the kingdom of God. Mighty God, mighty God. My God, the woman had one morsel to give unto the my, Lord, one my shilling. God. Yes, and she gave it unto the Lord. He was more pleased. Preach the text with the shilling. <laughs> Preach the text than he was with the masses. So what am I saying? <laughs> what are you saying? God's chicken may not be as big. <laughs> ah. Uh-huh. It may not have as much sinful flavor <laughs> on it. Sinful. <laughs> but when I tell you there's an eternal value. My God. Because when the pearly gates Ooh, open my and God. you see a Chick-fil-A awning in heaven, yeah. I want nothing to be said <laughs> about Popeyes. Man, Chick-fil-A just Hallelujah. gave you like lifetime red yes. status. You need, you need to look for that sponsorship. Got red status lifetime. Oh, Come on, Chick-fil-A. wherever you are, lift your hands. Lift God your is going to change your spirit in my this God. place. <laughs> as for me in my house... Yeah. It's Chick Fil A. Um, Good. Hey, for Jesus, there's a witness in the room. He's in the room. There's a witness in the room. They get my money. <laughs> Chick Fil A, go ahead and sponsor this video. Um, okay, uh, we're talking about spiritual warfare, reading the room. I feel like those two kind of go hand in hand. Um, but let's start light because this is it's like, a spooky. Podcast. It's a, I'm dead. <laughs> it's a spooky it's, gospel. Um. <laughs> Can you give an example of how, maybe like a funny example, well, it's funny now, but in the time it wasn't funny, but like, can you give an example of how you may have missed read the room? Mm. Ooh. I don't know if it was, <laughs> so I got invited one time to, uh, to sing a song, a Christian song, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize when they sent me the, the entire um sheet of what I'm going to be doing and stuff like that. I don't, I don't think I read the whole thing. Okay. So I went and I'm like, oh, this is a great song. I forget what song it was. Um, it was a couple years ago. And I show up and I'm ready to lead worship. I'm ready to like have a moment with Jesus uh-huh. and lead people to the presence of God. I get there and I'm a little bit late. And so I'm rushing. I'm backstage. I'm getting ready. And they're like, all right, you're going to be on in a couple seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, great. It's going to be good. And I get out there and I didn't realize that this was a nursing graduation. Oh, you mean like a nursing home? Like, no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> no, like people getting their, their bachelor's in nursing. Oh. And I was going to lead worship and they wanted me to sing this song. And I didn't put two and two together. So as I'm walking out, <laughs> I see all these nurses with their little hats on. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I'm not about to lead worship. <laughs> <laughs> so I got up there and I... I kind of introduced myself, made it quick, and got out of there. Like I sang this song maybe in less than two minutes, and I was, I was, and it, for me, I don't know if it was like I wasn't reading the room, but I didn't, I didn't know the assignment. Okay. And mm. uh, so I don't know if that even goes with the question, but as soon as you asked that question, I said, "Man, my, I just saw a nursing hat pop up in my head." But yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. It was a kind of embarrassing mm. moment. All right, who else? I, I've got one. I think. Um, I was traveling with a worship leader, and uh, I think we might have been in uh, Jesus at the Center. And end of end of the song, I swear I heard Stephen step up to the mic <laughs> at the end of the song. I swear, and so and my eyes are closed, young worship You're leader. You're ready to go, and I step up and I go into it. And about midway through, I'm looking and I'm like, everyone's backed off. She actually asked me to grab my mic and pull back, right? And so I am mid-moment, and thankfully they they came to my rescue, and we kind of ushered back in. (laughs) But I'm like mid-exhortation, and I kind of see in the peripheral that no one is with me. And I was like, oh, she meant pull back, (laughs) not step into it. Take us there. It was the... Pull back moment, and that was that's uh, good. So that one sticks. That one that's, sticks with me. They kind of pulled back they from covered, you, like yeah, like uh, Hunger Games when they called yeah. Pro, Primrose Everdeen, and everybody was like, like mm. "Nope." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were pulling back. So uh, worship leaders, keep your eyes open. Yes, keep fam. your eyes that's open. That's good. That's good. And uh, yeah, um, I think mine is pretty simple. It was just a situation where I had planned and planned created a set list and everything. I was going to do all the hype songs, let's jump for Jesus kind of stuff. And we got to the uh, event and the audience was like 50 plus. 
And I was like, mm. <laughs> I can't say none of these songs. <laughs> what were some of the songs? Um, I definitely had um, Freedom, Jesus Culture on there. Okay. Young and Free? No, Jesus Culture. Um, the spirit freedom. of the Lord. Yeah, right. yeah. And um, all the 50 plus people are getting offended right now. Like, <laughs> we <laughs> love you. <laughs> Um, it just yeah, what, yeah, the yeah, things yeah. I chose sure. just weren't sure. uh, for the room, so I quickly adapted. I'm grateful that I know the hymnals of, <laughs> of the Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> and uh, we sang things more fitting for the atmosphere. There is one that I have. It's recent. It's not really that funny though. Um, they ain't so, all funny yet, you know. <laughs> okay, so I was, uh, I think I was covering for you one time. And, uh, oh, so I can't wait to hear this. The morning, no, you were there. Oh, okay, okay. The morning, the morning services typically are like a little more calmer, you know, the congregation is a sure. little more, um, older, yes. would you say? Because yeah. the younger people ain't coming to nobody's 8 30 in the morning. Yeah, so, yeah, 8 30 is definitely a little they little coming to that 10 o'clock, 11 45. Amen. But that 830 service, you know, it's a little more laid back. But, you know, I was ready to worship. I was ready to give God my my best. You know what I'm saying? I think we were doing Lord, You Are Good. And I was like, we about to, y'all, Lord, You Are Good, fam. Yeah. And I got out there. I was like, come on, let your hands be good. We going to give God all the praise. Come on, Lord, You Are Good. And the people were like. Sipping on them lattes. And, Man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you are good. No, all the t- Oh, God. All the t- You know that white hot sweat that yes, just, just run from the back of that's your yeah, to the. Yeah, it that's was. It. You ever had a moment where uh, I remember when I first um, got here, uh, the church that I'm at, and uh, our senior pastor was doing a moment, and I didn't know his signals at the time. I didn't know exactly like what he meant to go up and bring it down. And he put a fist behind his back and I'm thinking, oh, we, we done. I'm bringing the band <laughs> Bring down. down. <laughs> and he gives me another fist and I'm like, guys, get down. Like, if we ain't getting down. So I'm like, bring it down, bring it down. And he gives me another fist and he looks back and he's giving me, and I'm like, what do you want? I, I don't know what you want from me. I'm waiting to see There's what nobody did. playing but the keys, but I was like, so I looked at the keyboard, but I was like, just turn yourself down, little so you turn yourself down. <laughs> and later on that night, he was kind of laughing, but he was just like, hey, when I give you the fist, that means I want to I, I want to vamp up. I said, oh, oh I did let's do this. not. I was like, let's do this, I did not beloved. read that right. Because the fist is like the international sign of stop. Right. Yes. So I just, that, that's But he was... gave me that, and now, I, man, I watch for the fist. I make sure. <laughs> the I don't miss fist. that. Wow. All right, for those who are, don't know what we're even talking about, Let's define what is reading the room. What does that mean? Um, well, so at our uh, at our church, we have um, we've almost kind of given ourselves a, a we call it a leadership value, which is basically saying uh, we are uh, thermostats, not thermometers. Mm-hmm. Which meaning uh, when we come in, uh, anyone can read a room. Anyone can take the temperature of a room. We know if it's a somber, if it's rejoiceful. Uh, we, we can kind of feel the expectation in the room, but then as worship leaders and as leaders, our job is not just to read the room, right? But then we know where we need to take it. Right. So that's kind of the, the right. idea of most people can tell us how, how are we feeling? How are mm-hmm. you feeling? Mm-hmm. Uh, doctors ask, how are you feeling? Mm-hmm. Um, and then kind of then from the leadership standpoint, coming in and taking that room where it needs to go. Right? Okay. So, so being able to come in and, and how's the room feeling? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then what right. are the cues that you would use to, le- to, to read a room? Like, what cues? Are there cues? Anybody? Hmm. P- uh, people sitting by themselves. Okay. You know, you, that sense of community. You're looking for a community. You want community in your churches. And so are, is someone sitting by themselves? Okay, so maybe how can I foster a moment of community? Mm-hmm. How can I kind of take that moment where a neighbor can meet somebody or um, create those community moments, like when we sing together, let's sing together. Yeah, Let yeah, people yeah. know that they're not alone. Uh, just one idea. What, what, do, what do you mean by by cues? Like, what exactly are you are you talking like about? Like, how do you what engagement? Like, when you come out when you come out on platform, you're getting ready to lead worship, mm-hmm. and you're kind of like looking around the room, you're feeling the room. What are the cues that you would look for to determine what the feel of that room is? Like for me, I think of okay, are the people sitting down? Yeah. Are they with me? 
are they singing? Are they engaged? Are their hands lifted? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I mean, I think what Steven's saying is we kind of we kind of set the tone for the room with expectation. I think sometimes, you know, when I'm leading worship, there's been times where I've been leading worship and I notice after the first song that like there's certain people that are sticking out to me in the congregation. Mm -hmm. So I start mm -hmm. praying for them. And I remember one time I was leading worship and I was in, I was in a moment. It was, it was, it was a great moment, but I asked God in that moment, I was like, God, I want to hear, I want to feel the burdens in the room. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I asked Ooh. that Lord, but he gave me, Burdens of divorce. He gave me the burdens of sickness, cancer. He gave me burdens of discord, relationships, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons. And it was such a it was such a heavy burden. Yeah. And it was almost like, man, I, I was almost like imagining what Jesus felt on the cross when he kind of bored everything yeah. on the cross. And and as worship leaders for me, <laughs> I haven't prayed that prayer. <laughs> Too often. <laughs> I'm super careful now when I pray that prayer, but it, it gives you a sense of what's really in the room yeah. and what's needed. And there's times where it's like, it, like the last time we were on this, I was kind of talking about, um, you know, you don't understand what people are going through. And someone might be holding a coffee and they're not singing the whole time. But after church, they come up to you and like, listen, that song that you sang mm -hmm. really ministered to me. And I'm like, you weren't even singing. Like you weren't even, <laughs> like you weren't in it with me. You know what yeah. I mean? But they were they yeah. were processing it very differently than yeah. I thought they should have processed it. So I think even reading the room sometimes is not is not just physical. It's it's spiritual. So oh, it's, it's looking yes. at God. Okay, what's happening in this room? And what song like what songs do I need to be singing yeah. today? What 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 moments do I need to be taking? What scripture do they need to hear today? And so yeah, I I think sometimes. As a worship leader, I get stuck in the physical. Like, is their yes. hands lifted? Yeah, 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 Are they yeah. singing with me? Yeah. Are they excited? Are people yeah. like, um, because you get those people that are like, they're encouragers. They're yeah. in the third row. Right. There's yes. this one guy on oh, my, yeah. my campus. <laughs> There's this one guy. He's an older guy. And this dude is with you from yeah. the moment pre-roll yeah. starts. And I just, I appreciate him. Yeah. But I know there's a lot of people in the room that are not as engaged as he is. Mm -hmm. But... They are spiritually, they're engaged. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. just not showing it. So yeah. I, I definitely take a temperature check too. I, you know, we um, kind of have a two minute, um, what we call pre-roll before we jump into worship. And I take that, some of that time to say, hey, to a couple of the people. Yeah, in you're the front great row. at that. Yeah. yeah, like just making sure I'm even taking that time to know what's happening in people's lives yeah. and, and how they're starting off their worship service yeah. in a way kind of help me adjust yeah. and uh, figure out how I need to approach. even. And yeah, I've sometimes. seen Stephen do this a lot of times because uh, we serve at the same church and um, it's, it, that's a great way to shrink the room. That, that's yeah. a great way to, to kind of put up, like I, I tell some of our worship leaders all the time, like, listen, Get in the lobby because the lobbies where you're going to have connections, people you're going to talk to, people you're going to pray for. And then when they see you on a platform, they're going to say, oh, I know Mikas. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, know I was him. just talking to him. Like, they're going to be a little bit more engaged to what you're saying and be able to follow yeah. you just a little bit more. Um, then if it's just I'm some person, on. huh? I'm working, <laughs> working on that. All right, we no, all working fam, on it. No, because I'm an, I'm an introvert, yeah. right? And I don't, uh, <laughs> I get like... I get really nervous to like walk out. Like it honestly, it takes a lot out of me to just walk out and mm -hmm. and stuff. Cause you know, you, you have the people be like, oh my gosh. Oh, it, and it makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So I I just sometimes sometimes and I'm working on this on like, you know, saying hi and walking with my head up as, as opposed to walking with my head down so nobody see me. Like, please God, don't let, mm -hmm. don't, don't let nobody see me. I don't want to be seen. But it is important to be welcoming and engaging so that is something that i'm working on i've seen you do that where you'll come off the platform and you'll just go out into the congregation yeah. and you'll just be and i just i don't that's not my yeah <laughs> like it's not it's just, it's just not me like yeah. right. i guess for me like i i tr and i don't know i don't know if it's a bad thing or not it's just kind of like how i was just brought up it's how we were both brought up actually like oh. it was always we're getting your game face on right yeah and you kind of look, kind of have that face of like serious and like holy. don't mess with me, like don't really talk to me. <laughs> I look real holy right now. Right, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I'm really, in, I'm really focused and I'm in tune. And I think being here with you guys has helped me to like not lose that presence and focus of mind, but mm -hmm. also to 
kind of relax a little bit mm. and know that God's not going to leave yeah. you because you went to go say hi. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like that's yes. I I think I think there was that fear of like Oh my God, if I break my focus, the Lord's not going to, I'm not going to be in tuned with the Holy Spirit, (laughs) you know, and then God's not going to be in the room and (laughs) you've broken your, like, it's not, I mean, it's, it's deep, but calm down. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's something that I'm still learning. I think you wanted to say something. Oh no, I was just gonna just agree with what was being said. I think just the way that we were raised, um, it's. I was always taught to not gauge God moving, like his presence in the room on people's response. Yeah. But a lot of times that's the very thing we look for yes. to gauge if God is in fact moving. Yes. Yeah. And so what Micaiah said really, I agreed with completely with the, like, Lord, give us your eyes, give us your ears spiritually to see what's going on. Because mm. a lot of times homeboy sitting in the back with his drawstring clothes and the, the hoodie with the holders <laughs> big, sitting in the corner. <laughs> Like the Lord could really be <laughs> ministering to him in the back corner, right. and I'm so on. He's sitting down, yeah. And then we get mad, like y'all. He ain't been good to you. You want to open your mouth? Stay Are you not entertained? You know, like that kind of thing. And it's like, no, God is moving, and so like God give us this spiritual eyes and ears to see what you're doing because you are in fact moving. You are always moving. You're always speaking, and yeah. so I don't want to ever as a worship leader to base the physical even though those things are helpful but the physical may not be happening in the way that you want it to and trust god you're moving you're always moving you're speaking so i was yeah. just i'm just agreeing with what everything that was no saying. that's good i think you know it's funny i think sometimes because we're worship leaders and we take it so serious what mm-hmm. we're doing because it's a spiritual way that if someone you see someone not taking it as serious as mm-hmm. you you get upset you get us like there was this one time <laughs> this was like a couple months ago um I don't even know who she was, but she was in the third row. And as I am like getting ready to go into the first song and I'm talking and I'm giving scripture, she is on her phone, <laughs> like talking to somebody. <laughs> and it threw me off. And it, it honestly, it got me upset. And I, I was like, Lord, you're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with me right now because I just stared her down. And I just was looking at her like, and if she would have made eye contact, I would have been like, you know, like get off the phone. But like, that really, like, even with reading the room, like, we have to understand that not everybody's going to give us what we want yeah. in regards to hands lifted, voices up. And uh, so we have to kind of, like, channel through that. And like you said, spiritual ears, spiritual eyes to see what God has and what God's doing in the room so we know how to lead. So. There was one time I was in worship, and I, I felt like there was, there was such a tan- tangible presence of God I felt like suddenly my eyes were open Mm. and I could literally see in the spirit what God wanted to do. Like I literally could see deliverance, God coming over and touching this person. It was, I really can't even explain it to you, but it was like, I could suddenly my eyes and my ears were open and it's like, and I think I said something like God is here. He wants to, he wants to touch you. He wants to deliver deliverance is in the room, reach out and touch. Like I could literally see it that God wants, wanted to do something. Um, When we're talking about like spiritual warfare, there could be, let's say you have someone who's just coming into church. They're not churched. They don't know really what we're talking about. They're like spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. Y'all just come out and your guitars and y'all mm-hmm. look cute, and clapping your hands and singing songs. Like, what yeah, are you yeah. fighting? <laughs> you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, what what is the fight? Um. Well, so we know in the, the book of Ephesians it says we fight not against flesh and blood. Uh, but that was the scripture. Well, you want to go ahead and read it? For I was going go ahead and read. You better it. have a bookmark. Tell you you want to read it? No, go read it. Read it. Uh, it is Ephesians chapter six, um, verse 12. I really hope this is the scripture that you had in mind (laughs) for we, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents. This is the amplified version. Um, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly and supernatural places. Yeah. So, in all of our personal lives, there are things that we each deal with. Um, this is why I said it's a spooky episode. Um, because 
the spiritual world is very, very real. The things that are happening to maybe the things that you've opened yourself up to via through music, movies, or whatever, there's a spiritual oppression just as much as there's a spirit, a spiritual world in the heavenlies yeah. fighting on our behalf, there's a spiritual world in with the enemy fighting against us. And so as we go into worship, the things that people come in with, we don't know people's stories, but we are physically, not physically, but spiritually fighting against those things and warring so that the hearts of the people that are in the room can get ready to receive the truth and salvation of Jesus through the word. You were saying just like there was a service where you saw deliverance in the room. I feel like I've seen that also. But on the flip side, I've also seen like demonic oppression in the room, mm -hmm. which is very, um, I wouldn't say scary because I recognize who I'm with, whose side I'm on. Right. But at the same token, I've seen demonic oppression in the room. I've seen um, literally the hand of the enemy at work with the people in the room yeah. and it almost puts me puts us as worship leaders in a place of there's a real struggle happening in the room yeah lord we need you in your strength to combat that yeah. but yeah that's just my quick answer no that's good and I, th I think when you were talking about the unchurched i think one of the things that you know as a worship pastor like i am I am introducing people to Jesus and i'm also leading them to the presence of god so yeah. I, I feel like even with people who are unchurched I always want, and in some shape, form, even if it's in the song or somehow prompting, like for me, I always like to tell people about the character of Jesus, who he is, uh, what he's done um, for you, not just for me or the people on the platform, but he's he's done it for you. Um, and uh, so, yeah, for me, it's like there's going to be people in the room that you're leading that know Jesus, and there's going to be people that are in the room that have no idea who he is. Yeah. So I think it's... It's, you know, as worship leaders, we get to introduce people to Jesus as well as lead them to the presence of God. And um, I think that's an important, you know, when you're introducing your best friend to a person that you like, you know, you, you want to make sure you do that well. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I want to always introduce people to Jesus and I want, I want them to know he's this, he's that, he's yep. done this, he's done that, and he will do it again. Yep. And I think for people who don't know him, um, you know, worship um, is, is probably the easiest way for people, because music is cross-cultural. It's everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go to H&M, you got music. You go in the elevator, you got music. So there's music all the time. So people are going to connect with that. And I think if they could connect with who Jesus is, especially if they don't know him, is super important. Um, but yeah. That's great. And uh, it's so important why our th the theology and our worship, uh, yes. the, the theme. Talk about when it. You yep. put that, when, you, when, you, when Jesus is that center, it, as much as possible, yes. like that introduction. I mean, for me, here's where worship and the spiritual warfare kind of uh, come face to face in Matthew 4. The mm -hmm. devil, uh, it says, the spirit of God leads Jesus out into the wilderness. You better 40 know days. your word. Go ahead. The devil comes in and he starts testing Jesus. And mm. he kind of, that third test, I feel like is where he kind of, comes to his, yeah. here's what I really want to know. Yeah. Would you give me some glory? Would you worship me and I will give you the world kind mm -hmm. of thing? He kind of lifts mm -hmm. Jesus up. He's like, I'll give you everything if you would worship me. Yeah. And I feel like, man, the enemy wants to steal worship. Yeah. Yeah. So if we come into places of worship, that is the space that, you know, we talk about the enemy who wants to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah, he's after he's after souls. He's after people. But if he can steal worship, yeah, if he can take back worship. Yes. And that's why worship does become a battleground yes. a little bit because the devil wants to steal worship. Yep. Yeah. So he wants to distract people. Yep. And so and that can happen a lot of different ways yep. in our services. Uh, and then, and then of course, as we're talking about, that's where the truth of who Jesus comes in, yeah. it comes in and, yeah. and those things, it's powerful. Mm. So, okay. As worship leaders, right. I'm sure we've all experienced times where you felt like <clears throat> heaven, not heaven, hell mm -hmm. is coming at you. Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever, there was one time I was I'm telling all these stories, but amen. Um, <laughs> There was one time I was I was in worship, choir behind me, congregation in front of me, band over here, pastor and his elders over here. And it was like everything disappeared and I saw in front of me 
a semicircle of demonic forces. Mm -hmm. Just, and they were, and I heard them. They were, and I'm literally in the middle of worship, literally. And they are hurling every accusation at me, every last one, and saying, you shouldn't be doing this. Why are you doing this? You have no right to do this. You can't sing. I mean, it was a barrage. Mm -hmm. Like, have y'all ever experienced that? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you may not have seen it, but like in the spirit, like you could feel it. <clears throat> well, I, I, I've seen it. Um, so mm -hmm. I grew up Spanish Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my close, close friends in my family, um, he, his name was Cesar, and he actually had the spiritual gift of seeing yeah. like mm -hmm. people possessed or carrying a specific spirit. And I remember one time we were in service and he was playing bass. And I'm like in the second row and we're all worshiping, really small church. And he <laughs> he threw the bass on the ground. It didn't make a noise. I don't know how it didn't make a noise because <laughs> if you get the feedback, it's crazy. Um, but he threw the bass on the ground, jumped, practically jumped over me, over sure. three or four chairs, went to the last row and started doing deliverance on this woman. And he, later on, he told me, he's like, dude, I go into Taco Bell and I, I could see the person sitting in that table and they, what they have on them. And mm. there's times where he goes up to them and just says, you're carrying this, you're carrying that. And, I, and in the name of Jesus right now, and he's casting it in, in Taco Bell. <laughs> and, uh, wow. But I remember it was like maybe a couple months ago, we were singing the song, uh, I Speak Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm like, you know, preparing and praying the day before. And I'm like, God, give me a word if you want. And he brought me to the book of Mark and, he's, and it's about the demon possessed man um, and Jesus getting out of the boat and where demon-possessed man sees Jesus, runs towards Jesus, bows toward, before him, and says, Jesus, what do you want from me? And I'm like, how am I supposed to share this? In, <laughs> how am I supposed to share this in church? Like, God, you better, you better make it. And we were singing that song. And as we were singing that song on Sunday, God brought me back to this moment. It was, uh, I think, the second service, because God knew I did not want to share this text. I read it, and I, basically what I said in, the, in that moment um, was, even the demons have to bow at the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the people who are in the room that I don't know what they were going against, I don't know what they had, I don't know what they were carrying, but they, that even whatever you have has to bow at the name of Jesus. Mm. And, uh, and we were singing that song, Shout Jesus from the Mount, and, and God took over that song. I, I think we were leading together mm -hmm. at that service. And, but I was so scared to, like, I think even as worship leaders, I'm, I'm a little bit, like, yeah. timid to yeah. share. Mm -hmm. yeah overly spiritual like yeah. so you know how sometimes people yeah. come in they're like it's this is a little bit too much we're talking about <laughs> demons and yeah. we're talking about all this warfare but um but for me it's like you when the giant comes against you with sword and spear you need to come against it with the the name of the lord yeah, and yeah. i think for me I, I needed to be reminded of that because i feel like god was challenging me in my leadership like it's okay yeah like it's a, this is real and mm -hmm. this is prevalent right now and so when i shared that i was I was looking at my cameras past. I was like, man, I'm I'm about to do this, and I'm and I usually don't. Share, I usually share more uplifting, and yeah, yeah, yeah. and but this was it got a little dark real quick, but it was fitting for that moment. Um, and uh, so yeah, but yeah, I feel like we forget, or at least I do. Maybe whatever. I feel like I forget just how. I think you and I were talking about this, Colin. I feel like. The devil and the, sp the the spirits, they be laughing at us, fam. Because we they know how serious this is. Yeah. I don't know if in general, in church in general, remember that everything is spiritual. Yeah. Like literally, it could be like God could go like this and you could see everything in the spirit and then go like that and then you don't see it. You see, I, I don't I don't want that gift. No, <laughs> no fam, you know, I do not. Like I, I've never I'm, seen it. <laughs> I don't want to see nothing. Yes. I don't want to hear nothing. Lord, I've, I've just... felt, I've experienced, but I don't want, you know when they say, when, when the Bible says, fear not, yeah. and the angel appears? No, I'm fearing. Yeah. I mean, there's right. a reason why every, every time, time they time. say, but let me ask a question. Every time it's like, don't be afraid. Let me hey, ask a question. Like, Imagine it's like, <laughs> do you think it's a gift we should want? I don't want to. Um, you can feel it. Why do I need to see it? I, I mean, if the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is alive, and I mean, the thing is, I, my my flesh says in the uh -uh. natural. Yeah, the I don't want to see no, none of I that. Mean, like when you go to sleep at night, you turn on the lights off. Like I ain't looking to the left because <laughs> if I see a little shadowy thing, like <laughs> your boy's running to the room. But like, 
should we want to see that? Like, do you think seeing it would enhance our worship experience it as would. worship leaders? Well, I think seeing it is attached to fear. And mm. I feel like as a worship leader, as a Levite, like I feel like fear shouldn't be attached to yeah. our title. That's true. You yeah, know what I mean? True. So, yes, I don't want to see it. But, but yes, yeah, I, I want to be challenged. I want to see, you know what I mean? God, I don't know if you're listening. I don't, no, be, I don't want to be seeing that tonight. You, see, you lead on but, Sunday? <laughs> Tell us. I'll, I'll hit you up on Monday. But it's a real so question. I've always, you know, I've always, I've always struggled with that because I'm like, I'm not scared. But Oof. you're not scared in the moment. Yeah, I'm not scared. But I, if I see it, I'm like, man, I don't want to see it. But why don't I want to see it? Like, it's an internal battle I have because yeah. I'm like, I'm not scared because I know who walks with me, like Colin was saying. Like, yeah. But I don't know. It's, it's an interesting conversation because there's people that want to see it. And I'm like. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought about a moment randomly as you were speaking that I had personally. It wasn't like in a church service. It was just at home. And one of the few times in my life where there, there was something in the room. I kid you not, I, I felt there was a presence in the room, and I knew it. And as quickly as I was afraid, that was afraid, <laughs> but was as quickly as I remembered who I'm with. Mm -hmm. And that quickly, it was like there was an authority that rose up. Yes. And I was like an old school grandmother. I was like, <laughs> not up in here in the name of Jesus. <laughs> And so, I mean, it was real. It was real. Facts. And oh, facts. As quickly as I began to mention the name of Jesus and speak of, uh, the authority of the Lord to whatever that thing was, was as quickly as it left. And it made me think about when you were speaking, if we were able to see as quickly as I'm afraid is as quickly I recognize who I'm singing to and who I'm singing about. And then the authority we would have as worship leaders to maybe like your friends to, mm -hmm. to to who saw that woman. No, I'm going to sing to this thing right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you need to leave in the name yes. of Jesus. I see you yes. trying to hold on to my brother or my sister. Yep. You got to get up out of here. You have yep. no authority. And like our worship would be directive and it would be very, have so much more authority in it. So I, I'm scared to see Ooh. it, but it's almost like, Lord, if if I do have the vision in the middle of worship, I might come down off this stage and start laying hands yeah. in the song facts. on these people. Are the facts. Yeah. So, I but really, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just about to say, like, I think it, it goes with preparation, though, like yeah. spiritual yeah, preparation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And um, I remember one time I was uh, I was a little kid, and so I I've, I was very um, subjected to this stuff when mm -hmm. I was a kid because my, you know. The Caribbean culture, the Spanish. Yeah, I yep, grew up mm -hmm, yep. uh, in New York, and you know, Santeria is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Witchcraft, voodoo, all that. You know, you go to DR, you go to uh, Haiti. All, all these mm -hmm. Caribbean islands carry this stuff, and they practice this stuff. And I remember I was going to a concert in the Bronx, and uh, we got there real early because I think my mom was like helping out or something like that. And it was in a school, and it had in schools in the Bronx. They got like seven levels, yeah. like mm -hmm. seven stories. So me and my cousin Eli, we walk in, we go to the second level. It's like all dark. None of the classrooms are lit up. We go to the third, we go to the fourth, fifth. Finally, we get we get down, and we're in the service, and we're in the concert. And I'm at the edge in the auditorium of the school, uh, and like maybe like the eighth or ninth row, and I feel this like thing just fly by me, yeah. and I was like, mm -hmm. I look back, I didn't see anything, but I notice this person with a uh, like a black wardrobe like i don't know like a hoodie thing it, it, basically it was a warlock oh, and okay. on the other side was the same thing but he was holding like a, a cane and they got to the front and whoever was singing at the time it was like a, a salsa artist a christian salsa artist was singing and the lady just started in Spanish, started cursing, started uh, basically exposing this guy that he's like, this guy's in drugs, this guy's doing this. And immediately, my my cousin and a couple other people just ran to the front and started doing a deliverance session on, <laughs> on, these, on this witch and this warlock. And, uh, and I, I remember feeling that, <laughs> it's funny, because... I, later in the day, they were, we were basically asking, like, how did they get in? Like, do you have to have a ticket to get in? And they told us um, that uh, that they were hiding in one of the rooms mm -hmm. all day. One of the rooms that we passed by, we were walking by. But I remember when they all went to the front and did a deliverance, I remember I was like, I, I want that. Like, I want to be able to have the authority um, whenever I'm leading or whenever mm -hmm. I'm in a situation that I could just 
I have the authority of Jesus to do that, but I think it does come with preparation. Yes, I, it I don't. Does. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it could be a scary thing in in the flesh, but I think in the spiritual realm, I think when we're walking with Jesus, it's 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 different. I was talking to this one person one time, and I went to school in Nyack College in New York. Shout out to Nyack College, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I remember talking to this guy who was in the spiritual. He did a lot of spiritual warfare and stuff like that, and he had a conversation with this used to be witch she was a witch and she was basically saying you know i always stayed away from people with a light on them like because she could see in the spiritual world she was a witch and she was like i stayed away from them until i realized that they didn't know the power they possessed mm. and Ooh. and she was just like you know they have this light which we all know is jesus yeah. um and the holy spirit but when she realized they didn't know the power they had and so for me, I, I remember listening to that conversation saying, I, I want to know the power I have. Like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to just have this light on me and I, and I'm walking around scared, you yeah. know what I mean? As a worship leader, as a worship pastor, but yeah, it's, it's definitely comes with preparation. I think the times when I have like experienced something, like I may not have seen it. I've never seen anything, but I've certainly experienced it. My family is very um, sensitive to that mm -hmm. stuff. We're West Indian as well, mm -hmm. um, and so I've I've seen I've seen a lot. I've not seen demons, bless God, um, but I've I've experienced things, and I, I've always found like when I'm experience when I know something is going on, it's like this some this boldness rises up mm -hmm. in me, mm -hmm. and it's like oh no. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you're not standing on your, it's not you standing yeah. on yourself because you in and of yourself going to get molly whopped all over the there floor, fam. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. But we are standing on yep. the authority. And that's what, I mean, that's what the Bible says. No yeah. weapon yeah, formed yeah. against us shall prosper. Yeah. And every tongue that rises against us to condemn, we, uh, what, what does the scripture say? We we shall condemn for the uh, your uh, uh, their heritage is of me saith the Lord like this is the heritage of the saints and the righteousness is of me saith the Lord so I'm stamp my righteousness is in Christ so yeah. I yeah. have that authority I that He has given me to stand up and say no devil not in this house not on this platform yeah. not in this church not in my life mm -hmm. yeah. you go back to hell where you came from yeah mm -hmm. I'm just saying yeah it's beautiful. I love, um, I'm just over here swirling in my mind. I love, um, if you've ever watched uh, Brooke Lidgerwood mm -hmm. lead worship, I feel like she sees through the veil. Like she mm -hmm. kind of looks upward and that's the beautiful thing. If you could see through the veil, yeah, yeah maybe you could see darkness, but there is a unmatched power yes. around that, right? That, yes. that, that prayer in Second Kings, yes. open his eyes that he might see that we are surrounded. Yeah. Uh, I love if you go a little bit further, uh, Second Chronicles, there's that fight in the wilderness of Tekoa. Shout out to Nick DePace, <laughs> his old band. Uh, there's that moment where God says, hey, you're not going to fight today, yeah. which is like yes. within spiritual mm. warfare, like who are we to go, oh, I'm the one that's going to battle today. Right. God says, no, 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 you aren't going to fight. You're going to bear witness, which is what worship is. Yeah. Worship is just a witness to God's yeah. glory, his holiness, yeah. who he yeah, is. Yeah. Yes. Worship is, I'm going to witness what God has done. I'm going to yeah. witness yeah. what God does. Yeah. And so that's the thing. We're coming in to witness God go into battle right. for his people because yeah. that's that then yeah. Paul goes on forever. Okay, I am seated in Christ. Yes. I am a witness to his glory. I am a witness mm. to uh his power. Mm -hmm. And uh so worship is the witness yeah. Yeah. of God going to battle. Yeah. yeah. I think the audience had a question. Yeah. I like, love it. No, they're just very, they go crack <laughs> <laughs> And that in response to what you said about the woman that said um, they didn't know the power that they had. Mm -hmm. So what, the, where does the boldness, the stand on the authority that you guys are talking about come from? What does the journey look like or do you always have it? Ooh, that's a Ooh, good that's one. Good. I'll, go ahead. <laughs> well, I love that the Bible we only gives us like 
one offensive weapon when we're talking about the armor of God, but like a million defense weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if like, you know, like that I would be guarded with truth yeah. and peace and yep. the gospel, that my yep. mind would be covered by salvation. Man, so many of the battles uh, and books that we probably read is like, it's all talking about the battlefield of the mind. Like my mind has... Uh, defense mechanism that God has given me something to defend my mind, to defend my heart, that I would be girded in truth. Oh, truth and freedom go together. Um, and then, then I would go on the offensive with the word. And so yeah. I, I think that uh, the defensive part when I'm not, you're right, we're not always on the offensive. There is a, uh, but we've been given these incredible uh, tools to, you know, faith. Is the, oh. That is a really, a really good question because I think um, in this season, I'm just going to be 100. In this season of my life, in the last few, I would say maybe a year, maybe two years, it's been a hard season for me. And sometimes as a worship leader, you know, as sometimes it can be really hard to put the stuff that you're going through to the side because oh, you know totally. you got a job to do. Mm -hmm. You know that our lives are depending on you doing that um, and hearts depending upon you being able to press through. Yeah. And that can be the hardest thing sometimes. Yeah. And there are times where I will, I will step out and I'm like, God, real talk. I don't have it today. <laughs> like, I do not have it today. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to pretend. Yeah. I'm not going to sit up here and act like I'm holy. Because right now, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm tired. I'm really sad. I am stressed. I might be low-key angry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm frustrated. There are things that I want to see that I haven't seen yet. There are things that I do see I don't want to see. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, I think honesty plays a role in that yeah where you're not pretending like god knows anyway yep. right he sees you where you are mm -hmm. so i come to god and i'm like god this is what it is yeah but i want to honor you today like you have to do it the, the script there's a scripture that says in your weakness he is strong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's yeah. not asking for me to be strong all the time i'm human yeah. we can't be strong all the time yeah that's when i feel like those times the presence of God be extra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember Jenna, my sister, <laughs> when I would lead back in New York, Jenna used to come over to me. If I was having a particular time, right, I used to go to the side and just kind of like pray to myself. And Jenna would come over and be like, how do you feel today? <laughs> like, do you feel like crap? Oh, the presence of God is... And I'm just like, get out of my face. <laughs> but I'm like, but real talk, like I always noticed that when I was my weakest... And I had I could do nothing else but throw myself onto him. Mm -hmm. The presence of God would be extra, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "This wasn't me." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it, I know what, what it, I know what it was. Yeah. But I'm I'm fully aware that that was not me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think that's it's, there's something beautiful about that because I feel like there is there needs to be a desperation for Jesus. So I feel like at times when we're worship leaders or worship pastors and we're leading. And we feel like, oh, we got all the transitions, mm -hmm. we got all the scriptures, mm -hmm. we got all the songs, we got all the chords, we got everything. I, I don't need you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, so Ooh. I feel like a lot of times God's like, no, 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 no. no. Let me remind you yes. that you need me. Yo. It was a couple of weeks ago. I was, I was not feeling up to leading. And um, actually, it was more like a couple months ago. And I remember I... I text my campus pastor and I said, hey, I need you to, I need you to pray for me right now. Yeah. Like I'm about to lead in four minutes and I understand the weight that I carry. I understand the, the responsibility that I have as a worship leader, but I need you to pray for, I need you to fight for me right now because I'm, mm. I'm struggling yeah. right now. Mm. And he did. And, and so I, I feel like to answer that question a little bit, you, yes, you need, you need the word. Yes, you need you need to be prayerful and and ready and prepared. But I also feel like you need a little bit of a circle with yeah. you as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, people that like yeah. my mother, um, she's she's a prayer warrior, and yeah. I grew up with a grandma, um, and she didn't always live with us. But when she did, she was in her room speaking in tongues, mm -hmm. like she yeah. was fighting for the entire. Mm -hmm. And she had thirteen kids. 
and 60 something grandkids. So there was, she was fighting for the entire family. And yeah. I feel like you need, as worship pastors, um, or as, regardless of what you're doing in ministry, you need a circle yeah. of, of people to pray for you. And, um, and I have a couple of those people that when I'm struggling, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, listen, man, uh, yeah. I can't tell you all the details, <laughs> but I, I need you to pray for me right now. Like wow. not in an hour, not yeah. tomorrow, not when you think about it, like yeah. now, like yeah. I need it right now. So That's good. yeah. Have you ever, have you ever been preparing like you're in rehearsal and let's, you know, we, we do dress rehearsals down here. So, uh, you're doing that dress rehearsal and, and you just feel in the presence of God. And it's like, I don't care if there's nobody in the room. The chair is about to get this worship. You feel me? <laughs> like, we about to go in. Like, I, I personally like to take that time and just go in from myself. And, yeah. amen, the people going to come in. You just mm -hmm. going to eavesdrop. But, um, and then the people come into the room. You start that service. And it be dry. <laughs> Oh, I used it. Oh, so did I use all the oil in the in You'd the You'd be dress? like, Jesus, yeah. where, where are you? <laughs> Has Amen. anybody experienced that or is it just me? Oh, no. I don't know. It's oh, been we've experienced. all experienced that. It's, yeah. And then for me, the tendency is if I'm not careful, I'll turn it into myself and be like, did I do something wrong? 100%. Is there some is there something off about me? Or try to manifest. Yeah. And manage the presence of you. Yeah. Know, I think in those moments, it's important to be like, all right, Lord, clearly you want something different than what was planned. Am I willing to go with you or am I going to try and fabricate your presence based on what was created? There was um, one of the first times I led worship in New York in my old church. Um, it was like one of my first times. I was 20 leading in the main, main service. And I was like, all right. So I had my list. I had my transitions. I had all the things ready. I had my keys. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Then I'm going to stay here for a little bit. We're going to have a moment. Like everything was so planned because it was my first time and I wanted to be perfect. And in my old church, we had a big curtain. And um, so the service started at 3 o'clock. At 2.59, the senior pastor walks over to me. Do, oh, do, I remember do. this. Oh, you were, in the, you were there. Do, do. He goes... I feel like God wants to do something different today. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> he takes my list. And he rips it. Rips two. it <laughs> and walks back to his seat <laughs> and immediately signals for them to lift the curtain. Yep. Immediately. Yep. And so <laughs> I'm in this moment like. Talk about, you got to finish this story. Go ahead. I, I can't wait to hear First this. of all, it's my very first time. <laughs> so I was terrified now you telling me everything I planned is in the garbage. <laughs> Follow Jesus. Not We should always be following Jesus, yeah, but at that yeah. moment, I was just kind of like, oh, <laughs> God. We say loud for about 15 minutes. <laughs> for about 15 good minutes. Oh, we don't need no words. Just open your mouth. Um, God in his grace, though, did show up. And the thing that I learned in that moment is that you mentioned before being prepared. Yeah. We need to be prepared not only physically, but spiritually, because yes. sometimes God wants to do something in the room that you didn't plan for. Yeah. Because I may have the greatest transition in the world. I can't wait to wow the people with <laughs> this boom, bam. And God is like, no, I have another song for what is happening. There's somebody coming in that needs to receive this other song or this other thing. And if we are not attentive to that, it's almost like we miss what God wants to do yeah. in the room. And God in his grace always shows up. He always gets his glory and he, he always gets his work done. I think about a story of a friend of mine. She was at a conference um, and the lady in front of her, um, the Lord told her to give her a hug. And she's a very introverted person. She was like, I don't know this lady. I ain't talking to her. Da, 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 da. And the Lord put it on her heart so strongly, give the lady a hug. And she was like, no. Well, she watched another person. It was like a big arena. Walk from the other side oh, of the snap. arena, come all the way around, and go to the lady. Hey, the Lord told me to give you a hug. Wow. I hope it's not weird. Gave the lady a hug, and the lady broke down and just, there was a whole deliverance moment there. 
All that to say, regardless of our obedience or disobedience, God is going to do what needs to get done in the worship moment. That's speak deep. to who he needs to speak to. That's deep. Minister, break the chains that need to be broken. Yes. But your obedience, yes. the thing that happens with our obedience, if we're not obedient, it do, like it's almost like we can't level up in our faith because we yeah. don't know how to trust God. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's, we need to be sensitive to what's happening in the room. But a lot of times God is seeing our obedience. Yes. Are you trusting me beyond what you've prepared? Yeah. What you've prepared is great. And a lot of times, like when I'm preparing, I'm praying and I'm seeking God. And I believe God has given me this list. He did. Mm -hmm. But now he's like, you trusted me then with that list. Thank you. Now I'm asking you to trust me again. Are you willing to go left mm -hmm. from where you originally were supposed to be so i think a lot of times regardless of he said like if he spoke it it shall be so so if he spoke to somebody today's your day of healing regardless of what we do that person's getting healed because god said it a lot of time a couple it could be a moment for us to for god to be like do you trust me yeah. but also he wants to partner with with you yep like he gave yes. her the opportunity to yes. partner with him to facilitate whatever he wanted to do in this woman's life. Yeah. But because she wasn't willing to do it, mm -hmm. God literally had to send somebody else to go walk across an entire... But he wanted to use mm. you. you. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. I, I never start a service without praying, God, help me to be sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because I want to yeah. participate with you. Mm -hmm. I want to be in that with you. Yeah. Like, the, the, the incredible honor privilege it yeah. is to partner with god in touching somebody else's life he didn't he doesn't have to use you but he wants to yeah mm -hmm. and it's like going back to what and i gotta touch on this i know we've been talking for a while how long we've we been talking <laughs> okay <laughs> um i i gotta touch on this because going back to what you were saying about if we saw all the things mm-hmm I think that it would change the way we lived our life, yeah. not just the way we prepared for worship, yep. Yep. not just the way we approached worship, because worship is not just on the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just the residual effects of whatever you did during the week. Yeah. The worship is how you lived your life. Yep. So I think if we saw the things, maybe we wouldn't go to that movie. Oof. Maybe we wouldn't hang out here. Maybe we wouldn't My drink God. this. Maybe My we God. wouldn't take in this. Maybe we wouldn't watch whatever, maybe yeah. whatever it is. But I think that's why that song where it says, God, make me more aware of your presence. Like if we were more aware and that's why I feel like the spiritual forces be out here having a good old knee slapping laugh. That's why we was be talking about they right. be laughing at us. Like, because they like, you, you are here doing games. the things you do it. You just partaking with me. Right. Like, and we just over here doing like the Molly. We just yeah. like doing the Dougie all up in your life. And you don't even <laughs> realize that you're playing games. And now and you, you want to get up and lead worship and call that thing out. And that thing be like, who are you? Right. <laughs> so I, I feel like it would change. It would definitely affect the way we approach how the way we lived our life yeah. and therefore that would affect the way we approached worship. Mm -hmm. Like I, I have to be honest with you. I'm going to look in this camera cause that's, that's my camera. <laughs> this is my chance to challenge whoever you are, whether you're a worship pastor, worship leader, whatever you're just serving on the worship team, whether you are in the band, whether you're in production, whether you're putting up lyrics, the way we approach service, the way we approach the throne of God, you need to know that you putting up these faders is more than you just putting up faders. You putting up lyrics is more than you just putting up lyrics. You're just as important as what we are doing on a platform. And the way we approach it, we got to be so careful. Like I've seen, I've seen so many things that really just discourage me and make me sad. Like, you walking up to your instrument playing watching something on your phone like you minutes from getting ready to lift up the name of it can't just be us on the platform it's everybody yeah. how you whatever spirit you coming in with it's going to affect what happens on the platform it's not just the singers on the platform fam it's 
It's you and the band. It's you and yeah. production. It's you. It, it's all of us. And I just wish I I I want to challenge people to take it a little more seriously. I mean, I remember I was when I was in my sin, mm -hmm. fam. <laughs> I love Jesus all my life. But there was a four-year span. <laughs> I was out here in these streets, okay? I was a little wild, okay? Before I was a worship leader, I was not. People going to be like, oh, my God, but you lead a worship, is it? No, calm down. But, like, before I became a worship leader, there was a season where I kind of, I was out here, yeah. okay? But I remember, but I was still in the choir. I was still in the choir then. I remember feeling like I was sitting on hot coals. Mm. I remember feeling like God could kill me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and I would deserve it. Because yep. <laughs> I know I'm out here just mm -hmm. being crazy. But God in his mercy brought me back. And I don't know. I feel like I'm talking. No. That's good. I, I like what you said. Um, because I feel like, uh, I don't remember who said this to me, but what fills spills. Mm -hmm. And whatever mm -hmm. you're filling yourself up with, it's yeah. like eventually going to come out. Yeah. And I think for worship leaders, for drummers, for production man, whatever you're doing, um, whatever you're filling yourself up with, whether it's the word or worry or whether it's, you know, this or that, um, it's, it's going to eventually show itself. And, yeah. and I think for us, like if we're filled up with the word and we're filled up with the Holy Spirit, yeah. it's going to spill over. Yeah. And, you know, and I think um, that's the beauty of what we get to do, but it's also that's it's a little bit of the scary part of what we get to do because if we're not taking it serious, this is an eternal effect. You yeah. know what I mean? That we're having on people because we could be the, the difference between someone hearing Jesus because they're only going to go to church one time this year yeah. or people hearing some performance. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, so for us as worship leaders, every Sunday, it's not just another Sunday. Um, it, it's definitely... Um, it's a it's the weight we're carrying and yeah. whatever we're filling ourselves up with, yep. um, pe people are gonna get it. So yep, yeah. Make sure it's the Holy Spirit. How can we encourage people? Every, all the people, anybody that comes, like anybody in the facility of like worship. How can we encourage? Um, nobody's perfect, um, but how can we? How can we encourage the people? All I got is keep choosing Jesus, and that'll make the difference. Whether you're a worship leader or whoever, in all your decisions, choose Jesus. In your song choices, choose Jesus. Put him first, and then, because I keep yeah. thinking about what you said with the lady, the, the witch, where it's like you had the light, but they didn't recognize the power within. Yeah, That stuck out to me, because it's like, yo, I'm just going to keep choosing Jesus in everything and let his power manifest through me. I may not know what I carry, but if I keep choosing him, he'll make himself known in every situation. Yeah. Yep. So I feel like just choose Jesus in everything. Put him first. Every decision you make, there's some things that I feel like God has called me to lay down. Um, and I'm believing God that as I lay those things down, that in choosing him, there'll be a greater measure of his power that I will be able to see. Amen. Um, so just choose Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. Uh, I'll go. For, yeah. Because McKay is going to drop a bomb right I now. He's going to leave us with something real good. Uh, but one of our biggest encouragements, especially to worship leaders, is no matter the uh, venue you go in, yeah. uh, you, you are armed with the word of God. Your opinion mm. is yes. great. Yes. Your story is God breathed. Yes. Uh, but his word yeah. uh, will trump uh, anything in yes. the room. And so whether you are in a soaked season where you are just anointed and flowing or you are dry feeling like you are withering, yeah. <laughs> uh, which the Bible says in Psalm 1 that uh, the righteous will not wither. So that's mm -hmm. a promise for you. He will not let you go. That's good. Uh, but uh, when in those seasons, keep bringing his word along yeah. with you. Bring his word along. It's It, it will not return void. Yes, yes, that's Amen. good. I agree. I, just to piggyback on what you're Let's saying. Go. I beat um, you to it. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You beat me to it. But the word does say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for yes. they will be filled. Yes. And I, I, my encouragement for anybody is when you're practicing, make sure you're practicing in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Um, I remember well, there was one time 
um, I got news. I shared this story um, a couple of weeks ago, but I got news that my cousin was 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 dealing with with some witchcraft stuff. She got it mm. herself into that. And the night before, I'm practicing to sing this song, and my mom calls me and she gives me the news and everything. And I was singing this song, "Fight My Battles," mm. and Pastor Todd asked for it at a staff meeting. So I'm you know I'm getting ready to sing it. And I remember when I was practicing, I was just practicing to learn the song. But in that moment, I got the news. I I realized that I needed the presence of God yeah. to fight for her. Yeah. So I started saying, it may look like she's surrounded, but she's really surrounded by you, Jesus. So I started yes. speaking that over her. And um, and I, I was just reminded in that moment, like when I'm worshiping, I don't want to waste a moment. I don't yes. ever want to waste Amen. my words. I don't want to waste uh, any any song, any any moment that I have that I'm speaking. And I think when you're practicing in the presence of God, um, that's just going to spill over. Like I said, yes. what Phil spills, it's just mm. going to spill over to what you're doing on Sunday. Because Sunday, man, it's just, it's a celebration. You know, yeah. we get to we get to worship yeah. and, you know, we got a mics, we got a great sound system, we got all these things, but it's in your alone time. You know yes. what I mean? It's in your alone yeah. time. That's going to spill over. So when you're practicing, my encouragement is don't waste it. Don't yeah. waste that moment. Practice in the presence of God and uh, yeah. because if you hunger and thirst, you will be filled. It's a promise. Um. I think my, the last thing, I mean, y'all have said all the things that need to be said. I think that's great. Um, and I think my, my encouragement would be, um, it's a journey. Uh, leading worship, being a worship leader is definitely a journey of life. And I don't think we ever stop growing. We never stop learning. Um, and God's going to take you wherever he needs you to be. Um, and so I hope that you were encouraged. I hope you were challenged. I hope this made you laugh. I hope, I hope you just really enjoyed this conversation as much as we did. So, um, I'd really love to hear from you. Um, please comment in the, in the chat, like, tell us what you think. Tell us the battles that you go through. Um, thank y'all for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I us. really, really appreciate y'all. I really, really do. Uh, what, Micaeus, what are the, what, are you doing anything new? How can the people find you? Give us your socials. Yes, I have three kids and uh, they <laughs> keep me busy, but uh, <laughs> you'll find them on Micaeus.Lopez uh, on Instagram, also on Facebook, Spotify, got some songs on there. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's where you'll find me. I'm a family man. So just like Steven, we, we have... I have three kids and uh, my wife, beautiful wife. She's also a worship leader. So, but um, yeah, you can find me there. Got it. I have zero kids. <laughs> um, we bless God. I'll catch up one day. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you can find me everywhere. YouTube's, uh, YouTube's, YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Colin Jackson official. That's Colin two L C O L L I N J C K S O N official. Um, I have music everywhere. Spotify, all the places. Um, working on new music to come out. So check it out, Colin Jackson, everywhere. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Uh, Steven Robertson, and uh, you probably won't find me unless <laughs> Micaeus tags me on something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what, you, what is your Instagram? Uh, uh, Instagram, uh, SWRJ, my initials, Swerge. And uh, I lead worship uh, at a church here in South Florida called Christ Fellowship uh, in West Palm Beach. And um, you so, guys, he, you have a song that just got. Yes. So and we've got a couple coming out, uh, but we I did. We just uh, finished a song called Just Begun. And uh, and you, you, you wrote it. Helped write it. Yeah, helped write it. And uh, just there's this song that's been sung since the beginning of time. Just the highest praise. Hallelujah. It's the same in every language. Yeah. And uh, so ours is Just Begun. We're going to oh. sing it forever. Yep. Amen. Well, thank you, guys. We had a lot of fun. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, you can find us on... We have a, a lot of things coming up. We have uh, a lot of more episodes coming up. We actually going to have an episode about practicing the presence of God. Come on. Time. Um, so <laughs> stay tuned. Again, my name is Ivory McDonald. You can follow me personally at Ivory McDonald Official. But if you want to keep up to date with what's happening with... Uh, off mic with ivory follow the instagram it's off mic with ivory on instagram and tiktok i don't know why i want to say top tick tiktok <laughs> um and on we'll be on youtube uh it's actually ivory mcdonald but you'll see all the all the all the episodes on that youtube channel i love y'all thank you for joining we'll see you next time, next time. Do -si! <laughs>
Woo!